Dan Kolko here with Stone Garrett, who's bringing us inside the cage. A night after he hit two homers in a game for the first time in his big league career. So we set this up ahead of time, uh, and then you hit two homers the night beforehand. So I think you should be thanking us for timing yeah. this. I'll do an interview every single day. There we go. I two homers the night before. You heard it first. Uh, so Stone, you're kind enough to kind of show us your pregame routine and what you're doing in the cage to get you ready for a game. And your role has kind of evolved over the course of the season. And you were telling me that kind of your pregame routine has evolved a little bit too, that you've tried out some different things. Take us through just briefly the routine that you're on currently, and then we can dive into some of the things specifically. Yeah, just uh, try to keep it simple and just try to get the feel that I want for on-game BP or on-field BP. Um, right now, it's just being light on my feet so I can get my backside through and uh, just using the whole field, so staying long through the ball. So what do you do here in the cage before you even step foot out onto the field for BP on the field to get you ready for that? Right, I'll normally go 10 swings, one-handed bat, uh, each hand, so 10 left hand, 10 right hand, and then I'll go T, middle in, away, and then I'll do uh, some BP, light BP, short BP in here, and then I'll hit breaking balls off the starting pitcher. So if he's right-handed pitcher, I'll do sliders, left-handed pitcher, curveball slider. And with the breaking ball machines now, we can do all sorts of cool things to kind of mimic what the starting pitcher is going to be throwing that day. All right, so let's dive into this here. Let's go with, you're going to start with the, the short bat and do some one-hand swings for us? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, Stone, so we got the tee set up here, and you've got the short bat in your hands. And tell us again what you're hoping to accomplish when you start your routine this way. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep this hand inside the ball and direct to the ball. So uh, just trying to hit the ball on this side of the field, staying inside of it. Okay, and you do 10 swings with each hand yeah, using about 10 the short each. bat. About okay, 10 so yeah. let's, give this a, let's give this a shot here. And you put the tee kind of out in front of the plate. Right, um, just to you know, work on the extension and then catching it out in front. Okay. That's, that's a great start. Right back up the box. Right. Just right there. And just feeling that extension through the ball. OK. So those are good. I'm getting the feel of you know, direct to the ball and staying long through the ball. Kind of short to it, long through it exactly. sort of thing. Yeah. Switch to the other hand. And here, same thing, inside the ball and extension, trying to hit it to that side of the field. OK. Now, I'd imagine this has kind of a secondary effect of getting you a little bit loosened up and kind of starting with the smaller stuff to build to the bigger hacks and all that. Exactly. You know, just working on the bases, uh, getting loose, finding that rhythm. Uh, and especially with the right hand, I'm thinking connected backside to getting that back hip through and then staying long through the ball. Okay. Does ball flight matter with something like this, or is it more about the feel of the swing and you're not as much focused on what the ball does off your bat? Yeah, uh, you want to keep it off the top of the net for me. Um, just a low line drive, uh -huh. uh, but ultimately the feel of being connected is what I'm looking for the most. Okay, so you've done a few of those. Uh, now I'd move on to, you know, uh, two hands. I like to start in the middle, uh, and we're just working, staying through the ball, ideally staying on the right side of the field. Okay. So yeah, just low line drives, low effort, I'm just trying to feel where the body's at for the day. Perfect. And then we go inside, and this can be the toughest to work, you know, long through it, because sometimes I want to come over the top. So I'm mm. really thinking getting the backside through and then letting the hands follow. And when you practice on the inside edge of the plate, you had one a couple days ago where you got a pitch down and in, and you shot it down the right field line and you talk about staying inside the baseball. When you work on setting up right here, is that really training that staying inside the baseball to allow you to fire off a swing like that? Yeah, just trusting that the hands can get there. Um, I'd say at the beginning of the season, I wouldn't trust it, and I would probably topple over that ball mm. and then hit like a ground ball to third or right. yank it foul or just swing over the top of it. But just trusting the hips to fire and the hands to follow through and stay long through the zone. Okay, so talk us through again here, when you set up here, what you're trying to feel? I'm trying to feel the hips firing first and then the hands just following on a straight pass okay. towards the center field, right center. Okay. See, like right there, upper body kind of got fast. A little rotational. Yeah. That's better. The hips fired first. Not a low liner, but, you know, just feeling it out right now. Vargi, what do you think about what you're seeing? Beautiful. Vargi. Thank you. Vargi likes it. He approves. Yeah. The best hitting coaches are hype men. <laughs> 
So that's good. That's ball to center, line drive. So I'll take that all day. Okay. And then we'll go away. And on the way pitch, you're just thinking staying on it. So I like to think just extra head down and staying through it. Uh -huh. If you pull off, that's another one that you're probably rolling over to the right side on something that's down and away, or maybe it's a weak pop up to the right side as compared to driving it through the through the right side of the field. Right, or swing it over like a breaking pitch. So, mm -hmm. especially I'm facing righties now, I want to think staying on the ball a little bit longer. You have been getting more reps against right handed pitching. Is this something that you find yourself focusing on more now in your pregame routine, these pitches down and away? Yeah, absolutely. Especially days we're facing righties. Um, I just want to stay on it a little bit longer, give myself, you know, a little bit more chance of success against a righty breaking ball. Cool. So right there, using the right side of the field, perfect. Almost taken out the GoPro. Yeah, almost. almost. We're almost there. Yeah, so that's where I want to be. All sides of the field, or all the pitches, over the plate, center field to right field. That's exactly where I want to be for the day. Days that you're not in a starting lineup, you have a feeling you're probably going to get a big pinch hit opportunity late in the game anyway. So does this routine stay the same regardless of whether you're in the lineup or not? Or do you alter it dependent on that? So days, you know, I'm not starting. Let's say it's a day game at 1 o'clock. I let the guys that start come in, do their stuff. Mm. Uh, and then around the third or fourth inning, I'll roll in here, get my routine started, get ready to pinch hit, uh, you know, later in the game, middle of the game, whenever that may be. But uh, if it's a night game, I'll come in here, do my routine before BP, and then middle of the game, if I'm not starting, I'll come in here, you know, get some swings off, and then Frizz will throw us some BP, mm -hmm. or we'll hit off the machine just to get ready for that pinch hit. As you're getting more acclimated at this level, routine, you talk, you talk to guys and they say routine, regardless of whether it's infield drills, cage work, it can be so important. Who have you leaned on to help you develop this routine that has started to work for you so well? Yeah, all the hitting coaches, honestly, and the players, you talk to them about the routine, and uh, it's huge. Um, just having something you can fall back on to find that feel of you know, what made you feel sexy in the box, mm -hmm. out in the field. Uh, but, I mean, I, you got to do it every day, knowing that you went through your routine and getting out on the field and just trusting it. This was awesome. Stone, thank you for bringing us inside the cage, showing us how a big leader gets ready for his, his at-bats that night. Appreciate yeah, it. You got it. Stone Garrett bringing us inside the cage.